In this video, we're tearing down an old wall and building a brand new one with an integrated touchscreen that fits perfectly flush against the wall. During the process, I even found a newspaper that was printed in 1994. This is going to be pretty difficult with one hand, but we're gonna make the best of it. We're going to start by setting up the display and installing the software. What I have here is the Raspberry Pi Touch Display Tool and we're gonna make this the main screen of what's gonna hang on the wall. It's pretty easy to set up. First, we need to plug in the display cable. Then we're going to need an SD card that has the latest version of Raspberry OS on it. Luckily Raspberry Pi has pretty nice software to flash it, so you just select the SD card, you select the software you want to add on it, and it should run Raspberry OS. Then we can put in the rest of the cables, so this is the power for the display. We put in some of the screws to tie it up, <laughs> to then realize that I put the cable in reverse. So, we do it all again. Alright, it's put together, now comes the most exciting part. Let's uh, boot it up. There's a light. Oh, and there's a screen. For some reason, the screen starts out in portrait mode, but you can change it in the settings pretty easily. Now we can just go to the browser and run whatever we want. Now that the screen is prepared, it's time to destroy a wall. It's actually pretty crazy, but we found a newspaper from 1994 in the wall. Over here is the date, Friday, December 30, 1994. So, uh, yeah, one of the articles is actually, it's quite interesting. It's talking about CD war between the, the United States and China, which is actually really cool. But no one uses a CD anymore. There's actually a lot more in this newspaper. Let me know in the comments if you want to hear other stories. Let's go back to building. As we're building the new wall, I want to give a huge shout out to my friends and my family who helped me like through and through with the whole process of the renovation. Especially my dad who sacrificed many hours to work on the house together with me. So thanks a lot and I could not have done this without you. We thought it would be a good idea to use wooden panels instead of plasterboards. But wood expands and contracts, so in the end you're, you're gonna start to see these seams in the wall where the panels are. Which is something I did not realize at this point. But it turned out absolutely amazing. This is a removable panel that we put in while building the wall. It is actually attached using magnets. We can use the space behind this panel to mount the Raspberry Pi, we already pre-drilled a hole that we can use for all the cable management. Now comes the part that my doctor is really not going to like. This is going to be pretty difficult with one hand, but yeah, let's pray it works. screen and see if we can attach it on the other side. The wire is on is out and then we just slide it in. Perfect. Oh. Wow! Look at that! Wow! I need to find something to attach it here so I think it's the easiest way is to just to slide something in right here. Wait. This needs to go through here. I'm still thinking whether I'm going to do it with a real power cable and just resolder it there or if I'm going to add an Ethernet shield over here and then I just put an Ethernet cable through and then also it will have like a power over Ethernet so it will have like power and 
maybe that will be better. I found these things and I think they are quite nice. They are made for holding uh, these uh, storage cabinets together. But I had them lying around and maybe like I can use this. So let's see if, if it works. I need to be a little bit careful so I don't break things. I think this, this is actually quite secure already. You don't have to push it further. Bit janky, but it works. <laughs> and it is perfectly level as well, which is great. And some cable management. In the end, I just went with stripping the power cable, putting it uh, through the tube, and then I soldered a new plug on the end. All right, so I'm going to walk you through how I created a custom floor plan for my home automation dashboard. I wanted something clean, visually clear and easy to use, so I built it from scratch in Figma. I started with the base layout of my house, using the floor plan I got from Funda. It's a good reference, but visually it's not the best at what I need, so I brought it into Figma and I've been tracing over it with my own vector shapes to make it have like a cleaner look and feel. I also added the outlines of my furniture so I can easily see where everything is placed in relation to the room. This helps positioning my smart home controls later on. Once I had the design ready, I exported the image and uploaded it into my home assistant. I'm using VS Code for this and it's pretty straightforward. You just drag and drop the image into the directory so it can be uh, accessed and read in, and, and, and you can access it in the dashboard. In Home Assistant, I set up the picture elements card. This allows me to overlay interactive elements like lights, sensors or switches directly into the floor plan. I map out each entity to its real world location. So when I tap on the light in the UI, I can control it instantly. It's a super intuitive way to manage everything from a single screen. And it gives a perfect overview of the whole house. And that's it. This gives me a clean, functional top-down view of my house with direct control over my smart home devices. All right, let's move to the next part. And I'm sure this is the part that you have all been waiting for because we're gonna peel off the plastic. One of my favorite features of this dashboard is definitely the dynamic cards. In Home Assistant, I've set up automations that show or hide based on different rules that are happening in the house. For example, if there's movement at the door, the camera card automatically appears. Once there's no movement, the camera hides itself again. It's really fun. Another feature is that when I walk near the touchscreen, thanks to this Akara FP2 sensor, the screen automatically lights up without the need to touch it. I created a special zone and I, when, I'm, when there's movement in that zone, which is in front of the display, then it lights up. So I don't have to first tap on the screen to wake it up. It's a really convenient way to interact with the dashboard. And it's also super fun, just like pressing at the exact location on the image and then seeing something happening at that spot in the house in real life. Yeah, it's just an amazing feeling. I also get a full overview of my home at a glance. I can instantly tap any light to turn it on or off and I can easily see what's happening in each room. Additionally, whenever a door opens, it immediately shows up in the dashboard, letting me know what's happening in the house. Overall, these dynamic cards make the dashboard incredibly responsive and seamless. The only improvement I'm considering is upgrading from a Raspberry Pi 4 to a Raspberry Pi 5 in the future, as I've noticed occasional lag, especially when the camera feed loads. But overall, it works fantastic and I'm extremely happy with it. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, and subscribe and see you hopefully in, like not in a year but sooner so bye bye